Welcome to St. Mark's and St. John's. A special welcome to those of you who are joining us online. I invite you to take in a deep breath. And as we do so, we breathe in the presence of a loving God and center ourselves for the worship ahead. We come together on this day in the name of our Holy Trinity. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you govern all things, both in heaven and on earth. Mercifully hear the supplications of your people, and in our time grant us your peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear our first lesson. The first lesson is from Micah, chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. Hear what, the Lord, hear what the Lord says. Rise, plead your case before the mountains, and let the hills hear your voice. Hear, you mountains, the controversy of the Lord and you enduring foundations of the earth. For the Lord has a controversy with his people, and he will contend with Israel. O oh, my people, what have I done to you? In what have I wearied you? Answer me. For I brought you up from the land of Egypt and redeemed you from the house of slavery. And I sent before you Moses, Aaron, and Miriam. O oh, my people, remember now that the king, now what King Balak of Moab devised, what Balaam son of Bor answered him, and what happened from Shittim to Gilgal, that you may know the saving acts of the Lord. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with tens of thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has told you, O oh mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God? Hear what the Spirit is saying. Amen. We will read Psalm 15 responsively. Lord, who may dwell in your tabernacle? Who may abide upon your holy hill? Whoever, Whoever leads, leads a blameless, blameless life and does what is right, right who speaks, speaks the truth from his heart. heart. There is no guile upon his tongue. He does no evil to his friend. He does not heap contempt upon his neighbor. In his, his sight, sight, the, the wicked, wicked is rejected, rejected but he honors those who fear the Lord. Lord. He has sworn to do no wrong and does not take back his word. He does, he does not, not give, give his money in hope, hope of gain, gain nor does, does he take, take a bribe, bribe against the innocent. innocent. Whoever does these things shall never be overthrown. A reading from the book of 1 Corinthians, the first chapter. The message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the, discer of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since 
in the wisdom of God. The world did not know God through wisdom. God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom. But we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of, of you were wise by human standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, things that are not, to reduce to nothing, to nothing things that are, so that no one might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God, and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, in order that, as it is written, let the one who boasts boast in the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Before I read this text, I want to give an invitation. Instead of hearing the Beatitudes, the Blesseds, this morning with a sense of duty and obligation, I invite you to think of them as a way that Jesus is unlocking our religious imagination, unlocking our religious imagination. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our collective hearts on this Sunday morning be acceptable to you, our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. These are awesome preaching texts. I know that sometimes I get up here and I'm like, does anybody want to preach this morning? Because they're really, really hard texts. And these, in a way, are hard, but... Um, they are extraordinary texts, right? At the end of the Micah text, the Old Testament, we hear the line, 
O mortal, what is good and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? Wall plaque. (laughs) I'm thinking of embroidery. Um, I'm into crafts this morning, what can I say? Um, So that's the Old Testament text in terms of what is it that we're called to do? And no one's saying in these texts that these things are easy, but it's what we are called to do, to work for justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God on Twitter and off of Twitter. (laughs) Then the Psalm text. Lord, who may dwell in the tabernacle and who may abide upon your holy hill, whoever leads a blameless life and does what is right, and we know from Micah what that is, who speaks the truth from his, and I think her heart as well. Whoever leads a blameless life and does what is right, who speaks the truth from his heart. And the beautiful thing as we move into the New Testament is the realization that Jesus is the reason why we can live a blameless life, right? It would be impossible to follow the psalmist's instructions if it wasn't for Jesus. But we can live a a blameless life. And that's because of God's rich mercy that happened in, um, in his son. Welcome this morning. It's good to see you. Then we go to the second lesson, 1 Corinthians. And it's the last paragraph that I want us to look at this morning. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. I think this is a fabulous mission statement for, for clergy. Um, when we're getting full of ourselves. I think we should reflect on this. Consider your own call, brothers and sisters. Not many of you were wise by human standards. Not many of you were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. And these lessons kind of hit a climatic point in the Beatitudes this morning with the Gospel of Matthew. As what I um, invited you to think about this morning, the uh, opening and unlocking our religious imagination, as that would indicate, I think that in these texts, in this text in particular, Matthew is telling us through Jesus' words that what lies before the disciples, because he's particularly speaking to the disciples, others have come around because they've seen the actions that he's done, the healings and miracles that he's performed in the world and in these low places. They weren't in the big glitzy cities. They were in these noble, small towns. And so we get this kind of climatic moment of Jesus breaking open our understanding of what is possible in the world. And so this morning, I want to um, not just invite you to consider this, I want you to think about um, one or two, and we're, I'm not going to um, call on anybody, so you can rest, rest easy. I know sometimes I, I do that. Um, Rest, rest easy and just let yourself imagine what St. Mark's and St. John's could do just in terms of ministry experiments over the next couple of months, whatever it might be, that hits on one or more of these beatitudes. Okay, I'm going to read them again, and then we'll have a test. <laughs> Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are those who mourn, 
for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit, not just get by, but they're going to inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, what is right in the world. Righteousness is about our connection with God, our right relationship with God, for they will be filled. They will want for nothing. Blessed are the merciful, for they're going to receive mercy too. And blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. They will see God. And blessed are the peacemakers, for they will not be tired. They will not... Um, feel like their work is lost and for nothing. They will not be scared. They will not feel like they don't fit in. They will be called children of God. Children of God. And blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. And then there's those who are being reviled and persecuted. And not just because they're Christian. I know that that's oftentimes how it is read. But they're being persecuted because they're lifting up these virtues that Jesus has just put before the disciples. He's saying to them, you know what, when you go into some places, most places, and you lift up the lowly, it sounds really good today because you got a great group of people that are saying amen behind you. But most days when you are out there and you're doing the work, there aren't going to be those people cheering you on. And there may actually be people who are trying to put things in your way and stop you from doing that work. In some traditions, it would be even more lively because I would talk about the devil right now. One of these days, I'm going to do a sermon on the devil. That'd be, that'd be good. I will be somebody once I do that. So back to the religious imagination idea. There are things that we already do in this community that I think... Um, embody the Beatitudes, right? And I'm not saying to do anything um, kind of grand beyond that, but how can we live more fully into these things? And I want you to pray on that. And I want us to pray on that as a community. And then I want us to be able to have the audacity to try it with knowing full well that we might fail and probably will. And that too is good news because we are living boldly into the vision and we are trying. And that is a beautiful thing and I think that is exactly the path where Jesus wants us. It's the communities, it's the people that are not making that effort to live in the light of these beatitudes that I think God just kind of heavy sigh. And when people walk in or when people see us outside, we don't have to say a single word because they will see in our actions what we do those healing moments, having the gospel embodied in us and the work that we do, that something special is part of our life. Today, as we think about kind of the, uh, the Beatitudes and what they mean, and it's the year of Matthew, the God with us, um, scripture, as we think about those things, 
it is incumbent upon us, I think, as a community to do something that I'm always talking about, and that's to lean in with the promise of God, with the promise of God. So after this service, if you have something that's bubbling up inside of you that you think would be really, really cool for us to try, I want you to talk to somebody else here. Don't come to the priest. Talk to somebody else here and see what energy comes up because that's the energy of the Holy Spirit. And then maybe you want to tell a third person about it and invite them into that conversation. It's a way of being for us in 2023. And it's going to be so cool. So I promise you, Bob, it's going to be so cool. Not as cool as that sweater, but so cool. <laughs> On this day, um, as we look at the Beatitudes and the gifts of ministry that lie before us, um, it's not without being fed ourselves first, right? And so I want to end this sermon today by talking or just mentioning today the importance of this table for the work that we do and the mission that we um, do together as a community because we don't go out there with our kind of our tank empty. We go out there into the community, into the neighborhood, into our lives and the vocations that each and every one of you have with your tank full because we are fed. We are fed with the bread and wine, the body and blood of Christ himself each and every week. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please stand. We affirm our faith as we say together, we believe in God above us, creator of all things, sustainer of all life, we believe in Christ beside us, companion and friend, redeemer of all the broken pieces of our universe. We believe in spirit deep within us, advocate and guide who lives with us eternally. We believe in God's resurrection created world where all things are fixed and all creation fits together in vibrant harmonies. We believe in God above, beside, within, God, yesterday, today, and forever. The three and one, the one and three. Amen. Please be seated once again. As Andy plays some special music that he's prepared for us this morning, I invite you to lift up prayers of healing for a world that is in need, for our city, for our neighborhood, for all those who are feeling alone and desperate on this day. Please come forward as you would like, as you feel called, and we invite you to write the names of um, your prayer intentions on our prayer boards and light a candle. song we could ever sing, worthy of all the praise we could ever bring, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. ever say worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you we live for you holy
Please stand. Rejoicing in the good news of Christ's birth and dwelling in hope, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all creation. Merciful God, make your presence known throughout your church in all its different forms. Guide preachers and teachers to proclaim the work you do in this and every place. God of light, hear our prayer. You created the earth and all it contains. Help the earth rest and we with it during these winter months. Inspire us to dream your dreams for Eden Gardens and provide us with people and resources to make your dreams come to pass. God of light. Hear our prayer. You heal what is broken and make all things new. Grant peace in war-torn nations, that diplomatic wisdom and goodwill will be with all leaders to end the torment of violence so that all children may live in safety and security. God of light. Hear our prayer. You call us as your children and comfort us in our afflictions. Bring patience to the distressed, compassion to the grieving, and relief to the suffering. We pray especially today for Olivia, nine people who lost their house in a fire, Dorothy and Alfred, Liz, Annie, Sherry, Carolyn, Grace and Claire, Terry, Steve and family, Abby, Henry and David, Zach and Melissa, Kim and Krista, the Huber family, the Dahar family, the Rindel family, the King family, Denise, Pastor Cindy, Eddie, Jerry, Ursula, Maurice, Matthew, Ted, Fran, Michelle, Marge, the Desio family, Michael J. Payne, and for this community. God of light, hear our prayer. You give us examples of Christ-like living through the witness of the faithful departed. As your beloved called on the name of Jesus throughout their lives, inspire us to call upon him in joy and in need. God of light. Hear our prayers. We also lift up prayers of healing and peace for the Senzak family. Um, Steve's mom is struggling with her health on this day. Rejoicing in your glory revealed to the world, we offer these and all our prayers to you, O God of our salvation, through Christ our light. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor as we say together, Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share God's peace with one another.
Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Our service continues with the Holy Eucharist. The Lord is here. God's, God's Spirit, Spirit is with us. us. Lift up your hearts. Lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right to give it is right to glorify you and to give you thanks, our holy and living God. You dwell in light inaccessible from before time and forever, fountain of life and source of all goodness. You made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Now we praise you with the faithful of every time and place and give voice to every creature as we join in the eternal hymn, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You formed us in your own image, giving the world, the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might become stewards of all creation. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. You love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only begotten one to be our savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of your servant, Mary. Jesus lived as one of us. To the poor, Christ proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. The night before he died, your son, Jesus Christ, took bread when he had given you thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for, to remember me. After supper, he took the cup. When he had given you thanks, he gave it to them and said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it to remember me. From the gifts you have given us, we offer you this bread and this cup and proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come in glory. Therefore, loving God, we're calling now Christ's life, death, and resurrection, we ask you to accept this, our sacrifice of praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and our celebration that we may be fed with the body and blood of your Son and be filled with your life and goodness. Strengthen us to do your work and to be your body in the world. We say together, through Christ, uh, with whom, in whom, 
the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, world without end. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we share in this one bread. gifts of God for the people of God. Amen. Please be seated. I'd like to extend an invitation to all who are seeking God's healing, transformative touch in your life to please know that you are welcome to receive this meal. This is not my table, and this is not the church's table. This is God's table, and each and every one of you is welcome to be at God's table.
the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Was blind, but now. stand. We pray together. We thank you, O God, that you have fed us at your banquet table with bread and wine beyond compare, the very life of Christ for us. Send your spirit with us now that we may set the captive free. Use your gifts to build one another up and in everything reflect your glory revealed in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The wisdom, love, and grace of God strengthen each one of you to be God's hands and heart in this world of ours. And the blessing of God Almighty, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, be with you on this Sunday morning and remain with you always. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Go in peace and share the story of Jesus. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Please be seated. I am going to make um, announcements so short this morning. I would refer to your bulletin. Um, everything is just so beautifully put in there. Maria, thank you so much. Do you all have announcements you'd like to share with each other? some ministry experiment that's bubbled up in you in the last couple minutes that you're just that's burning a hole in you oh oh no <laughs> yes you have an idea okay oh no fantastic please stand what if like a half hour before the service we gave free coffee to people walking by it's simple it might be welcome I don't know. It's got a beat. You can dance to it. It was just a thought. <laughs> no, no I, I love it. I'm, I'm into it. Um, yeah, I love it. I'm here for it. As Maria has taught me to say, I'm here for it. Look how cool I am. Um, any, anybody else? Okay. Anything other than a coffee? Denise, stand up. Good morning, Good morning. everybody. Um, my heart was overwhelmed this morning because the nine people that was in the fire on the southwest side, one of them was my friend. And they had to tear the house down. It was so bad. So I just ask that you all really pray, pray for, for, for these people. And there was a fireman that got burnt in his face real bad. Do you know if they have like a GoFundMe page or something up for the family? No, no okay, if they if they do, please let us know. I will. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, of course. Any other announcements or that you'd like to share with us? All right. Um, thank you so much for coming this morning. Happy end of January, and um, see you again soon. Thanks so much.